interacting with myself. Um, and I just want to let you know that um, Iraq is a very, very multicultural uh, country. Uh, and um, I've heard you saying Shia Sunni. Uh, uh, in Iraq, uh, there wasn't a Shia Sunni thing going on prior the invasion. Uh, we lived in harmony thousands and thousands of years. We are all Iraqis and Iraqis only. These things just uh, surfaced recently only. And um, uh, I urge you to do your research about this matter. Um, uh, and you also mentioned uh, the Kurds. The Kurds are uh, people. They are, where, where Sunnis, Shi'is are faith. Uh, and they re represent 2% of the Iraqi population. Um, uh, I don't know if you uh, uh, have encountered uh, uh, some of um, um, the Negroponte uh, strategy in Iraq. And if you, if anybody yeah. is familiar with, with this uh, person and what he did in Latin America, and he used the same strategy yeah. in, in, in Iraq, um, uh, I. I would like to touch base on, on, on that issue. Um, um, that's, I think this is one of the uh, keys uh, to understand what's going on in Iraq, plus what's happening with Blackwater and all these companies. Um, that's, uh, thank you, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, on the Shia Sunni thing too, I, I, I usually spend some time getting real clear on saying exactly what you said, that. Um, I had been in Iraq long enough to know that especially when the talk of civil war and Sunni Shia and all this came up, I knew that it was really rude and at the very least extremely uncomfortable to go ask an Iraqi, are you Shia or Sunni? And when I did that, even I tried to explain, look, I'm, I'm going to ask you this, but it's only because I'm doing this story because people back home think this and this, and so I'm doing this story, so this is why I've got to ask you, are you Shia or Sunni? And I'd go through all that, and I would ask people, and the most common response I got, and you probably know what it is, is, I'm a Muslim and I'm an Iraqi. You know, and then other people would say, well, um, my mom's a Shia and my dad's a, Shia, a Sunni, so can you tell which half is which? <laughs> so I, you know, say, and you said it, so I won't be redundant, but... Um, I, I, I talk about this in the book some, that I think there's been a deliberate policy of divide and rule in Iraq from the, the very beginning, um, literally. Uh, when we talk about, um, I'll just gloss over it, but I think the key element is exactly what you pointed out, is the death squads. And uh, the, the quick synopsis, and I spend a good bit of time in this in the book as well, and, and give some documentation along with it as well. But the death squads, okay, so the U.S., goes into Fallujah in November, uh, days into the siege, commanders realize it's a catastrophic failure because it's effectively succeeded in spreading the resistance all around the country. And so they say, whoops, we need to do something to get the leadership of that resistance, so we need to ap apply death squads. And so they start investigating this and quickly start employing it because it's very easy for them to do because the U.S. ambassador to Iraq is John Negroponte, in Baghdad at the time, and under him is a man named retired Colonel James Steele. Back up to Central America in the 80s, Negroponte is Reagan's ambassador to Honduras from 81 to 85. It's extremely well documented that he uh, set up and facilitated and laid the groundwork for the right-wing death squads there. And then at the end of his tenure, not retired, Colonel James Steele, was the military arm of making that happen, training the paramilitary death squad, sending them out, arming them, funding them, backing them, that killed tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people in Honduras alone. Uh, retired Colonel James Steele, his title in Baghdad in November and December 2004 was Counselor for Iraqi Security Forces. These men ran the death squads through Iraq's Ministry of Interior, sent them out wearing police uniforms, wearing the army uniforms, literally going through U.S. military cordons to go into areas like al Adamiya in Baghdad and assassinate people and detain people. And I would argue that it's this death squad activity which has really spiraled so out of control in this sectarian cleansing going on in Baghdad uh, taking all the mixed neighborhoods and either shoving out all the Sunni or all the, all the, sh all the Shia, this is death squad activity. And, and now, of course, it's set in motion 
change of circumstances that have led to a point where Baghdad has essentially become a segregated city today. And this is not because Sunni and Shia hate each other, it's because U.S. backed sectarian death squads have made it so.